Hello everyone, my name is Jose Gimeno. I'm making another appearance on camera, somewhat rarely again. Um, and I wanted to do a quick run-through of how I capture VHS tapes. I happen to have a copy of Tenchi Muyo here that I came across actually a few years ago now. And uh, now that I've got my, my little capture station set up behind me, I thought I'd show you my methodology of how I turn this into a file on one of these, which is a SanDisk SSD. And I really recommend these um, over anything to capture to. Um, now this isn't like the greatest capture setup or even the most over the top capture setup of all time or anything like that, but I think you get pretty good quality. I know that there are better methods out there. I think the doomsday method or however it's actually pronounced uh, that you actually use the laser from the laser disc to get um, to get the video feed off of it. I believe there's like a tape head version of that for VHS that's not quite done yet, but it is coming. Uh, all of that is way too complicated for me. Um, and this might be complicated for some, but I think it's, uh, I think it gets a pretty good quality using, you know, standard equipment that you can find pretty easily on eBay. Um, we're gonna be focusing on this right here. This is the VHS DVD combo player that I use. Um, and you definitely want one of those, not to capture it to the DVD, but because it has a digital time base corrector. Um, what that basically does is that, apparently, I didn't know this, VHSs, they, uh, VHS players, did not run at a constant frame rate, apparently. They would speed up or slow down variably. And digital stuff doesn't really like that. You want stuff with a locked, rock-solid time code. Um, and you could buy, if you have an old VHS player, you could buy some uh, digital time base corrector that will do that for you, or you could just get one of these where it's built in. Um, and yes, underneath that is also a laser disc player. Uh, that doesn't seem to have the same problem, so uh, I don't know. That it probably just plays at a constant frame rate. Above that, we're gonna ignore these. This is just a UHD ripper and an HDVD ripper. They can rip Blu-rays and DVDs as well. Um, there are plenty of tutorials how to do that. They're digital files anyway, so there's no loss. I'm gonna to try to do this. I'm gonna to try to capture this with the least amount of loss possible while still being somewhat convenient for anyone who's done any amount of video editing. Uh, so let's get started. All right, first things first. This is the VHS DVD player combo that I use. Um, it is a, a Panasonic DVD combo. Again, like I said, it does have the ability to go ahead and actually um, transfer VHS tapes over to a DVD. But again, we're not gonna use that because that's compressing uh, the uh, compressing from the VHS to the disc. There's data loss in that, so we're just not touching that at all. Uh, instead, we're actually gonna use the analog outputs out the back to output a signal to our capture card. So here's the Tenchi Muyo tape. All right, so here we are on the desktop. Uh, and to tell you what capture card I use, it is called the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shundle Thunderbolt. Um, and unfortunately, they I don't think they make this product anymore, but it's a very convenient product um, for capturing high quality VHS tapes. It's not great for game capture, which is kind of why I love it. Um, game capture cards are plentiful and you can find them anywhere. Uh, for very expensive or very cheap, but uh, I prefer something that's designed for video. I do have a couple of game capture cards and they can get okay results, but this is something that is really, really designed for video capture and um, it has some features that, you know, maybe I just haven't played the capture card market well enough, but I, there's some things in here that I have not found elsewhere. Um, there is a USB version if you don't want to use Thunderbolt. Uh, it's USB 3, like the first one, so it's like 10 or 5 gigabits. This is Thunderbolt 2, and it's 20 gigabits, so you have that nice large amount of headroom. So it's very hard, you'd have to really be pounding this thing to get any skipped frames. Um, but anyways, we're going to go into the, uh, the settings here, and... 
the video output, I if you're if you're doing VHS or Laserdisc, you want 525i 59.94 NTSC. Um, that is the frame rate of VHS or field rate of VHS and Laserdisc. They don't do progressive scan, so do not put your stuff in progressive scan. Um, if you're on the PAL territories, there are PAL versions of standard def for you as well, 625i50 PAL. Uh, there are also, of course, HD standards. Uh, this thing does have an HDMI component, so if you've got some HD captures of maybe DVHS, uh, the first HD format, uh, you can do that. Uh, but we're going to leave that at 525i. I like to make sure that I'm displaying fields on the video output. Um, this is more for the video output um, because this has a pass-through, so you can put this to a monitor. I don't have an extra monitor, so it's just going to the computer. And, uh, you know, you probably don't need to really mess with these very much. They're, they're fine. If you use Final Cut 10, I guess uh, this is if you're, if you're capturing inside Final Cut. Um, but we're not going to be using Final Cut to capture, we're going to be using uh, Blackmagic's software. Video input, uh, you want to make sure that this is selected to component, um, in, in my particular case. So I know a lot of you are probably like, well, VHS is not a compo doesn't support component, it's not a format that sends out a component signal. And you are correct, um, it does not do that. It maybe possibly sends out an S video signal. I think it does actually send out an S video signal, uh, depending on the VHS type you have. Um, and here's the thing with this particular player, it does send out, uh, it, obviously because it has a DVD player, it can send out a component signal, uh, but it also sends out that VHS video signal through those component cables as well. And as far as I can tell, I've, I've switched them back and forth between S video and component. As far as I could tell, there's no difference. So it seems to be sending the S video signal, if there is one, um, out via component. So you are getting the highest quality out of your out of this particular player, at least, um, with component cables. If you are not using a DVD combo, you are probably limited to S video or worse, composite. Uh, if you can bump up to S video, you should be fine. Uh, next tab, which brings us to the audio. Now, uh, there's a lot of VHS players, including mine, that do support hi-fi. Um, however, I have noticed that if your tape doesn't, uh, it doesn't really seem to matter. And if you click this, well, the the DAC, I think, inside this, um, this uh, capture card, it's not that great. So you can use the audio hi-fi levels if you want to. I would kind of recommend staying away from them because they are not very good. And more often than not, if you select this and you do not have a hi-fi tape, it just blows out. It seems to just blow out your audio, so you have to recapture everything anyways. So I would just kind of stay away from this. In fact, if you, um, if you really, really want to uh, capture really high quality audio, it might be better to actually use a separate um, sound card like a separate DAC of some kind, and take the audio signal from your VHS player and convert it that way. Like you can run Audacity and um, and Blackmagic Media Express at the same time to record the audio and the video on one side. And I actually have done that before. There was a show called <laughs> that I did for Disco Tech, and the DAC on the on the tape. Uh, or the, sorry, the audio that the, the tape was sending out, the DAC inside the capture card was just overpowered. So I had to use my, you know, I used a $20 sound card um, that I happened to have and just use the line in and capture uh, the audio separately from uh, those, those tapes. And then the last tab, we have conversions. You wanna set these to none. Um, you can convert them up, I, I just don't trust hardware, especially hardware like this, to do a great job of converting your stuff. I will. I have actually tutorials on certain software that I would recommend. I would recommend Hybrid uh, if you're on the Mac. Um, any day of the week to do uh, standard conversions uh, over any hardware solutions uh, because you can kind of massage the software to uh, 
to work in the way that you want for your particular needs. This is more of a brute force method. And if you're, I guess if you're in a hurry, you like need to, you can just upscale this to HD. I really wouldn't. So just leave that alone. Um, you know, hit save if you did make any changes in here. We're gonna hit cancel because I believe I set that exactly the way I want it. And the next piece of software is Blackmagic Media Express. So this is Media Express right here. And this is where we're gonna be doing our capture. We wanna go into login capture. Now we're gonna go into the Media Express preferences and make sure that we have our things set. The project video format for this is 525i by uh, for 59.94 NTSC or 60 frames a second. Um, we do want to use the drop frame time code uh, and we are, I'm going to use ProRes 4x4, which is absolutely 100% overkill um, for VHS. You could probably just use ProRes HQ and get a perfectly fine signal. Uh, I like to go a little bit overboard and use ProRes 4x4. You can even go further than that and use ProRes 4x4 XQ um, if you really want to go over the top. Um, there's also DPX 10-bit uh, RGB captures, which I believe is just, you might correct me in the comments, um, I believe is just like literally image files. So like one image after another, it's like a literal image sequence. Uh, I think that's kind of unnecessary. You can also do uncompressed MOVs, which are slightly more convenient um, and will absolutely get the job done, but the file sizes are huge. And it's not that ProRes 4x4 isn't a huge file size, but it is manageable and you can pop that into Final Cut. You can pop it into Vinci Resolve. You can pop it into Premiere Pro, Avid Media Composer, whatever software you use, and it will play back perfectly fine. So I'm going to stick to ProRes 4x4. Uh, the next thing is you want to make sure you know where your media captures are going to. And in this case, we are going to be uh, not putting this on my boot drive. We're going to be putting this on a, um, on a solid state drive that I have connected to the computer here. And then uh, if you need to capture any still frames, I, I don't really need to bother with that. There was a camera button on here down here, obviously. Um, you can stop capture if, if drop frames were detected. If you're really paranoid, I would put that on, uh, you know, stop playback. That's if you can actually control the deck. I cannot control the deck from the capture card, so that's a kind of not a necessary thing for me. Uh, if you have anamorphic tapes, I don't know that this was ever a thing. I don't think it ever was. Um, like if you, in the professional world, yes, like absolutely. In the consumer world, I don't think this was a thing. Maybe if you're trying to rip a DVD, use this. But even then, like, just um, don't use a capture card to capture a DVD. Use... <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, apparently, they, this was a thing. Um, LD... Sorry, Laserdiscs had, had something called Squeeze LD. So if you're capturing a Laserdisc that wasn't letterboxed, actually was literally anamorphic and squeezed the entire picture into a four by three image, uh, you can use that setting. Uh, I do remember there actually did exist uh, some laser discs that were anamorphic and you would have to manually on your television set the, <laughs> stretch out the image so that it would properly show in 16 by nine. So they do exist, um, but they're, those are so rare. Anyways, that's the end of that. I just want to capture the actual tape. So why don't I go ahead I'm going to hit capture and I'm going to hit play on this and we should in a moment see the see the capture growing so off it goes should be popping up any minute now and again I can't control I can't control the um the deck from the, the software um Blackmagic Media Express actually does have settings where you can capture can actually um control your your deck from the uh, computer uh, however in the consumer space i don't think that's really a thing so uh you can also look at your audio levels and see your see your capture see how that's going and yeah looks great uh so yeah we're gonna let that run and we'll check on the recording 
once we are finished. All right, so we have our ProRes video. There it is. Um, we're gonna blow this up a little bit. So this is our capture. I now is an eternal love, treasure it. Now, very specifically, to make sure we really did it right, we, we want this result. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, ew, interlacing. We actually want this in the capture stage um, because again, like I said before, we don't want to do that at the hardware stage. We want to do that at the software stage. So when we clean this up, uh, I particularly use a program called um, uh, Hybrid. And I've actually done a little bit of a showcase on it. I'll leave a link to it up there. Um, and of course in the description. And I use a filter called QTGMC to deinterlace it. And there are people who have many different methods. Some people use Topaz, Giga, uh, not Gigapixel, Video Enhance AI. Not a particular fan of its uh, deinterlacing methodology for animation. I find that QTGMC works better. Um, you can upscale this if you want. Uh, you don't have to. But, you know, now you have a very clean capture of what was on the tape. And you can do what you need to do to it and you know filter it out and denoise it a bit um but look it's a vhs tape vhs tapes are kind of the lowest of the low when it comes to uh when it comes to analog recordings or when it comes to recordings or video in general they're they're pretty not great there's only so much you can do but with this you at least have a little bit of wiggle room to work with when you're filtering it and you're trying to make it look a little cleaner. Um, but that's basically it. Thank you all for joining me. I hope uh, that this was useful and I hope that um, you do your own myth. You don't have to do this exactly. There are many ways to capture video and this is just one of them. I hope you found this way useful. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to maybe deinterlace this a little later. Um, and maybe try upscaling it probably won't look very good because again it's it's just it, this needs to be filtered and cleaned up um, again I use hybrid for that there is way too much in that program to go into this video but uh, I again did showcase it so you guys can check that video out and hybrid is free um, you can also use Photoshop and just go frame by frame and clean everything up or Sometimes that happens. Um, but yeah, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. <laughs>